and welcome to another episode of Voice of Crypto. This is a podcast where we talk about Web3, crypto, NFT, metaverse and everything else. And today we have a very special guest, Peter, Peter Sang. Hi, Peter. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. So, so uh, today's podcast is going to be very special. We will understand from Peter his journey and what he brings on the table. So I, I would really like Peter to introduce himself. So Peter, why don't you tell our audience what you do, what has your journey been and what you do currently in Web3 space? I mean, again, thank you for the opportunity for the voice of, from, from the voice of crypto. Um, so I originally born from Hong Kong and uh, I started my career in uh, investment banking. So the, the part of the first part of my career was basically uh, doing a lot of uh, M&A, M&A deals with uh, South Asian, Southeast Asian clients. So they're in Singapore, Thailand, uh, and Malaysia. And I did that for three, four years. Um, that I managed to, you know, surprisingly um, uh, impress a client. And he called me uh, privately and he said that uh, he wants me to uh, set up uh, his own single family office. And that was like 10 years ago. So there were times ago. Um, and, uh, and I said, great, it's a great opportunity to kind of jump from investment banking to private banking, but not working in the big banks. So it, it gave me a lot of, lot of flexibility and, 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 and to invest. So um, th- at that time, um, he was, um, the family office was, had an AUM of 100 million. Um, and uh, because they were in, uh, in, in the business of uh, chip producing, so they were producing chip um, in Asia, computer chips and they wanted to invest in uh, tech so in general so so then I, I i set off a journey whereby um i invest in africa israel us and they were all um private deals so there were single uh, uh deals that invest in fintech uh proc tech insure tech um anything that's not related to chips manufacturing um, that was a good journey. So I lived and worked in Nigeria um, and then I uh, moved on to Israel and then later on uh, New York. Um, and uh, that was the journey. And then uh, I received a call 10 years later. Um, they said that it was, a, it was in the peak of the market. So uh, at the time it was 100 million and then it grew to 1 billion. I um, mean, said that, oh, it's, it was a top. And, you know, when IP was very active, um, he said, okay, um, let, let's liquidate everything. Um, and their uh, second generation wasn't uh, in, the, in, in the best interest of trying to pass on the baton because there was a lot of, a lot of in management involved uh, on grounds work and, you know, the you know, crazy rich Asian, right? They want to enjoy the wealth. And when I was the core in New York, uh, I was set out to kind of um, sell all everything. Um, and, he, and he was right. Um, at that time, um, my services were no, no longer needed. Um, that was, I was sitting in New York in Manhattan and I was saying, okay, what, what should I do in my next steps? Um, so a friend of mine in Switzerland reached out to me uh, and said that, okay, why don't you come here over? And, you know, Switzerland was nothing but hills, like snowy hills. So, um, you know, it's a great uh, place, country to kind of sink in and then say, okay, what should I do in my next steps? And he was actually a lecturer in the University of Zurich and was teaching uh, computer science um and, and then i learned um the blockchain 2015 that's when i get all, get in um series and ones traditionally i still remember when i was in uh and when i was in zurich my first thing that i did was i uh, bought a bitcoin the physical bitcoin in the atm machine um and, and, and there was nothing to, about making money it was just about i um, trying to say again okay, once if i become a grandfather it's something to t- the story to take tell my grandkids you know how much I messed up and whatever, whatever, yeah. So uh, I spent three, four years in Zurich. Um, and uh, of course, Zurich was the first country that ca- kind of came out with all this, you know, blockchain and crypto um, uh, infrastructure and, and, and le- legally, like, like the laws out there. But unfortunately, it didn't, um, it didn't boost, right? It didn't grow as I expected. So I, I didn't know... What, I didn't know any European language. So, um, so I moved down to London because I, all I knew was English. And that's when the COVID started. 
So I logged in four wars and I kind of um, started my LinkedIn profile um, and um, started to then reach uh, and start to receive a lot of like cold messages, cold emails saying that, oh, why don't you do some allies around that because blockchain and tech was really related in that sense. Um, and, um, you know, started advising a, a bit of a, a few ventures and then eventually I invested in some of the ventures myself as an angel investor. And uh, when the country starts to open up, then my previous in- employer called me and said, okay, wow, you're in London, you're doing digital access. Uh, we have a, a, a partner of ours, a business partner of ours that actually in second generation made a lot of money in crypto. So they, they bought Bitcoin really early on. They make bucket loads of money. Um, and they said, okay, why, why don't you help them set up a family office? And then uh, I managed the wealth there. So, so that's what I do at uh, the current position, trying to um, manage the wealth, not, not just on token, but also, you know, on operating businesses, such as, you know, um, building a, a centralized exchange, um, doing Bitcoin mining facilities in the States, uh, blockchain infrastructure, and also an ad hoc investments, single investments in the area. Such an amazing journey, uh, Peter, from from multiple places and then finally landing in, into London. So, so this this question is is which I ask all my guests who who come on my podcast is nobody planned to get into Web three probably because when we started planning a career, there was nothing called as Web three as well. So, do you remember that that incident or accident or that precise moment when you decided that Web three is, is something which which you want to get into? Well, it's just basically um, because um, the next generation of consumers is not you and I, right? It's probably our next generation. And um, the thought came to me because a lot of them was very um, media driven. So I was thinking to myself how to monetize this, right? Because at that time, there was just YouTube, there was just Spotify, right? And the younger generation was in the... in, in in the mindset of trying to, okay, I'm trying to mix some media up, right? I'm trying to monetize it and how I should do it. And, and, and the web you know, one or the traditional tech was able to monetize it because a lot, of the, a lot of the money has been taken as like commissions from the big companies. And they were like, you know, they were they're like um, the, 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 um, the uh, system that's been placed with them. And, and, and then, you know, then they got, they got out of the system. And that's why I kind of funded my first venture that was actually in the music entertainment industry because that industry is pretty um, bound for disruption because a lot of like Snoop Dogg, a lot of like A-list artists, right? They do a lot of like, you know, they, they, they write songs. They, they, they do a lot of things through Instagram, right? And YouTube as well. And they were saying, okay, why, why would I have all this, you know, um, inventive talents, and why? Why should I give you know these big companies a big uh, a big chunk of the my, my my money, right? And then they said, okay, there must be better th- ways of doing things, and that's how I got into blockchain. Really, I didn't go into blockchain because of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I didn't understand that by the time, um, but then you know trying to get into this industry, and then oh, it is right, right? And now you see Snoop Dogg launching the NFTs. And, 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 you know, that's, that's rocketing. Absolutely. Peter. I think that's, that's really good advice is, is that you don't get into investment because you see everybody's investing it in it. You got into it because you understood certain categories, certain industry, and then there was a real, real use case. And I think that's, that's a good advice to all of those who are listening to this from somebody who has handled multi-million dollar deals and he understands the category. So don't get just because chat GPT-4, just because AI yeah. is increasing, don't just randomly start investing in something which you don't understand. Stick to your basics. So, so Peter, uh, and, and and a lot of people who come on this podcast or on this YouTube channel are aspiring entrepreneurs, uh, people who are building their own projects, people who are looking for advice from VCs or from, from investors. So what are your, uh, so I, I, would, I would break this question into two parts. Uh, part number one is, what are your top three to-dos from an investment point of view? And what are your top three 
not to do from somebody who's who's looking and somebody who comes to you or or goes to an investor what are your tips here well what 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 we believe is that the cycle of blockchain is still very early on i i think we've gone through a, a stage where there's a lot of rug pulls right a lot of people coming in and testing the market it's, it's just like when internet started right basically there's no use cases i mean if like 20 years ago who who knows that you know we can do anything from our mobile phones and from internet, right? We, we, we can even speak now, right? In the Zoom call, right? Nobody imagined that 20 years ago, right? There was a use case at that time. And I believe, you know, the three points to do is basically, you know, um, when I, we look at, when we look at a lot of pitch stacks in, 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 our, in, in our deal flow, um, basically um, like AI is still very new to us, right? Quantum is really new to us, right? There, there are lots of mentions about that years ago, but there's no a lot of practical use cases. Um, even now in blockchain, there's not a lot of use cases, right? Um, you know, we, we've talked about smart contracts, about, well, smart contracts is there. And um, even all the mess that we have been through, you know, with FTX, with SVB and all that, right? Smart contracts is still undefeated, right? So there's a theory that, that, that we still need to build something. So I, I think we're still very early on and, you know, for people out there, entrepreneurs out there, um, you have to have a use case, basically, um, like any traditional VC as well, right? If there's no use cases and there's not a, a immediate problem you're trying to solve, I believe there's, there's, there's no investment because people are trying, I mean, AI or right? HGPT is still very early on, but blockchain is still very early at this stage. So if you have, immediate problem to solve now and there's immediate um, consumer that that wants your services i mean that's where to go to because that's where you get paid and that's where the venture will, will, will drive up right um so that would be the first point the second point is basically base back to basics right because uh, the team the founders uh where they're passionate enough to kind of like now, right, we are, we're, we're into like almost, you know, one year or more of a bear market, as I say, a consolidation market, whether the people that still up there um, still have passion to what they're doing. I think that's, that's, that's essentially um, that, that stuff. And, and, and the third point I would like to, to, to make is that, you know, whether there's people that's actually crazy enough to back your idea, because, you know, like the internet now, like the mobile phone, WhatsApp, for example, even my grandma mother can use it, right? So if you have that vision that 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 there will be use cases, even not for us, for like normal people, right? That, that even older people can use it. That could be a new tech. Um, three, the domes that 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 I would believe is that that when I receive pitch pitch decks, uh, our team. So basically, when you're saying that. There's something very new, no one's no competitors there. Um, then I think that that venture would gonna fail. That's a red flag. I, I yeah, don't... unless you like Bill Gates that can invest in like AI for like 10, 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, and you have that kind of wealth there. Um, like say I'm creating a new category altogether, there's no competition, which means it's 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 really run away thing. Yeah, when you say there's no com competitors, then there's like you know, and the second thing I would like to point out is that the business model is that there's very simple ways of doing, making money, right? Either you through SaaS or through, um, you know, uh, commissions and, and, and whatnot, right? So if you can't explain to us in one single time how, how you make money. So basically that's, that it doesn't change, right? The way that our fathers and ourselves now and the next generation making money, right? Same thing. Um, and I think the third thing is you're trying to be, um, regulatory and compliance about it now because now is a lot of government looking at it so if your if your product or your market is not regulated and, and, and whatnot i think that that would be um a challenge coming in the years ahead so peter you you really mentioned a very important point about you know don't stick to the basics is is either you there are only I would say maybe 10 or 20 business models in which you can work around uh, uh, in the category. Uh, however, a lot of entrepreneurs, when I meet them, when I talk to them, I, I read their pitch decks, they, they try to add in a lot of flashy things. Yes. 
next is the new thing this is metaverse this is ai and can try to make things very complicated when you go on on the last few slides of how the business model works and and this is i must have read at least 50 60 decks and i'm sure you must have read more than that but there is a complex structure which you see which you are unable to understand so so my point point here is is this only from from a traditional because you have been to a traditional investing side as well do traditional investors understand these things or or is it just because the moment you see such flashy things it is it is a red flag for you um yeah so so basically um because i came from a traditional background um and um i believe i truly believe that blockchain is an enhancement of what we how we do and decentralize everything right whereby anyone can can transact in any time anywhere um and 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 that is what it is right essentially in a nutshell right um and if you can't explain how that happens right because um it should be in theory that all these businesses should be the cost should come down dramatically right from from what we do because of the tech enhance uh, you know an enhancement and 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 how and how that creates society right that that that's how you reach out to people right reaching to like your broadcast as well right you reaching to a number of people a lot of people a million viewers and how 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 is that enhancing that 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 that's uh, that technology because technology technology is still here it's here but it's still building like like if you're building on bitcoin ethereum chain or whatever algorand or whatever um it's still in this very early stage because that's still i believe that's that well i, I don't see a lot of use like practical use case out there just yet um it could be you know improving 3 or 4 years or 2 3 year, years ahead right like our hardware like the the goggles that you use you know, yeah that that's like it's still very bulky it's yeah so the early they like like the early stage of mobile phones right where they's very really, really bulky and, and and costly so i haven't yet i think the software is like catching up um but the hardware is still lacking but i think the the first practical use like music entertainment gaming so game is coming up here as well um that is that i, I would see that um uh, there will be a lot of use cases um the way we transact we 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 see see a bit of that in bitcoin ethereum but you know you, you can't go out to uh a, a, a starbucks and say okay why don't i buy coffee through bitcoin that haven't haven't set up yet so i think that that they will have you know we're still early and they will many years to come to 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 to, to do that you spoke about gaming as 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 a category which has a real use case uh, which will which will eventually come in blockchain uh, i think uh, yes we have seen maybe the first leg of of play to earn which which obviously uh, did quite well for some time but but then people started understanding that you cannot play just because you are earning uh, what are some of the interesting use cases which you have seen or which you think will will be coming from from gaming uh towards blockchain and what is the reason for that is yeah so um that's coming on to my second project that I invest myself uh, so a company called Sugarverse so i look at um gaming studios um so i don't, we don't invest in single games because you know games could be 50 50 right it could be very good it could be very bad but we trying to invest in gaming studios um such as Sugarverse um and other um uh arena uh, probably not straight as well and probably in southeast asia um where they develop like web2 games and they haven't gone to the web3 yet right and that's a very good where well, we also invest quite a bit of studios in dubai as well um and that's where they have a collection of games um some could be good come some could be idle and how we try to convert that from web2 to web3 um and i think that's a a pretty good use use cases and we also stick to mobile gaming so we we're not like you know messes look at the other arenas i mean mobile gaming is very easy to use you can try to you know on have a wallet and how you play and earn i think that's some something something or free to earn whatever or free to play sorry and and that's that's how it comes to the the the, the thing and i think that's that's probably the first step we would like to like to see in that point and that's the reason why because it's very easy right so it's like only one third of the whole world's population is playing games on mo- like on mobile or even on on uh, the PlayStation whatever um and there's still a huge chunk of the um of the, of of the population haven't yet introduced that 
And I have some figures like last month, like only 300 million of the world population is into crypto. So they invest in crypto. There's a huge market out there. And I think um, if, if, if the game is very um, hands-on where you can, you and I could understand and we can do that. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a easier over the first sector that, could be, that we can invest and look at into it. Absolutely. And in fact, I, I was talking to somebody who, who is into gaming and he told me that apparently the fastest growing uh, age group in gaming is 50 plus year guys. And I was surprised to, to hear that. And he said that there are two reasons for it, Abhishek, because one is these guys were the original game players. So maybe they started with, with arcade gaming. Second is now they have time and they have money as well. Yes, of course. I, 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 I could never even think. I always thought that this must be teenagers who are the fastest growing, but but this is an interesting category. So, are you seeing this kind of demographics uh, across all the games? Um, not, not, not a lot across. I mean, I mean, like, like uh, Candy Crush, like those games, like easy to play puzzle games. I mean, that's kind of like, like unless you're a hardcore gamer, like in a, in like an e-gaming, like like. That, that sector is great, right? But you 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 kind of like earn money by competing with each other, right? Esports, right? Yeah. Um, that ha- that has grown a bit in Southeast Asia, but predominantly is everyone is still playing mobile games, right? During their way to work, or you know when they have some free time to their hand, you you wouldn't spend your time like no people wouldn't spend like a weekend like forty hours on the game, right? On a gaming console, right? And so it's mobile games. And I think that 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 is pretty much driving the market nowadays. So a lot of this, um, hopefully everything like could be interchain, multi-chain, like, and then you can, I mean, that market will be, will be still have to be developed. That I mean, as I said, the software and hardware haven't catch up yet, but that's a major opportunity there, uh, especially in India, in the emerging market, India or Africa and Latin America, right? Um, people have low, very low salaries, you know, and not like to develop markets. And you no, know, they they every like every day you earn 10, 20 US dollars. That's that's a great deal for them. So I think that's the market to exploit and, and, and to look at into. Right. So so Peter, now now since you're talking about gaming and, and investment, I think from an invest investment point of view, gaming has always been a very interesting category, uh, probably from a traditional environment as well. Uh, now do do so, so, so question is, is are traditional VCs, investors also investing in Web3 gaming or there are still some sort of questions in their mind or they're still sitting at the fence and trying, trying to understand it? No, I, I don't think so. I think we're way, way, way past that because the first stage, uh, a lot of money actually made from retail investors, right? I actually believe in that and they got lucky, right? And they, they got multi-millionaires, right? Now we have a lot of institutional um, just not VC bank as well, right? Coming into the game. So I think it's like, I believe we're past to that two, 2000 era where all, all the rock pools, all the, all the small companies that haven't survived, um, just gone. And with, with what happened with SVP as well, right? That kind of accelerate the process where, you know, the companies that don't have that use case couldn't survive with that leeway, right? Because, and now we're, we, I think this stage, 2023 beyond, I'm actually pretty positive now um, that everything will reset and then the, the company that has the use case will survive um, and that will be put into more use, you know, practical use and, you know, more scalability now than just an idea. So I, I believe, you know, we should look at it now and there's, and there's a lot of VCs, actually traditional VCs, you can see a lot of news trying to allocate some to crypto as well. So it's not just the A C and Z that are just predominantly um, in crypto. Traditional VC will have like 10, 20% or even family offices, right? They're trying to get 10, 20% allocated to, to that asset class now, right? And uh, hopefully the signature bank and all that, you know, silver gate, hopefully there'll be a bank emerging or several banks emerging that it could accept crypto um, and, and then eventually would drive the ecosystem forward. So now, now coming to a very controversial question to you. Now, I mean, I, I was reading somewhere. In fact, just before this call, I, I was reading a tweet and somebody said that uh, Silvergate is, is open for purchase or, or there's something, but the condition is that 
whoever purchases it they should not allow crypto as as a payment that's that's what was a tweet or a rumor i really don't know and there are a lot of been rumors which have been saying that this svb silvergate all this has been a coordinated effort to to break the the the, the backbone of crypto so what is your views and and obviously these are these these are not your company's view but your personal views around it what do you think is is it true or can there be a, a bigger picture to this as well and what will lead to to the next few rounds here oh i, I just believe my personal view i just believe that because at the government level they didn't expect that this industry could thrive that quickly so initially they were you know there was having second thoughts about that but then you know a lot of people come in you know with finance and FTX and you know, and Forbio, everything right they come in and um right this needs to be regulated because you know even the bank state credit swiss right that's a regulated bank right and that they couldn't control and um they think okay this industry is going to be i think what i see is that a lot of like um the government is panicking because okay this this is, is here it's here and and a lot of people is trying to get into this right and even banks get, get into in this and so they said, I don't need to regulate this, right? I, I missed the round whereby there's a lot of free money that's unregulated. People have taken a lot of risks. And, 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 and then, you know, the industry went boom and bust, right, for a short while. And I just believe now the government said, okay, we need to get into this, right? Sooner or later, I think, you know, the government say they don't want to get in, but then eventually they will get it because it's a huge industry. It's a decentralized finance, and that, that's something would happen. And we'll go, it's still going hand with traditional banks, right? But this is how the next generation will kind of spend money and try to manage the, the, the assets, right? They, they no longer trust a banker with, with, with a fancy suit and they just want to do things their way, right? You know, with, with staking or whatever and try to um, you know, invest what they want uh, apart from traditional assets costs, right? So I think, I, I truly believe that the government will look at this and, you know, I just have... I just went to an event from uh, the Chicago Business School, right? And and, and they even the F the the the, F the FCA there, the regulator saying that okay, we will we'll look into this, and we believe this industry will be here, and that's why we're trying to work our way through the regulations to make it. I think the project, you know, that I want to the messages I want to send to the entrepreneurs that you know just make sure that you guys are regulated, the project itself, and there's nothing. You know, dodgy about it, and and I think you know everyone was we 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 support it, the government as well. But but uh, you you said I mean it will be regulated, but don't you think I mean obviously I I completely agree and understand that there should be certain regulations uh, around any industry across. I mean if if there are people yeah. which are playing around, but don't you think it? And I think it's again it's it's a cash flow situation between. Do you want to centralize everything or do you want to decentralize? Because decentralized will have, you cannot, you, you will have your privacy, but then you do not control. So what is a middle way, which, which you think would be a right? And we all are at the initial stages. So we all are evolving, but what would be best way from your side to, to manage this kind of thing? Um, I just believe is that, okay, um, you have to let the society freely. I think, first of all, it, it is a, it is kind of sketchy, but what I believe is that okay, you first need to see what the industry could do, right? So basically, um, what I see from SVB is like you know, if SVB hasn't existed in the first place, I don't, I don't, I, I personally don't agree what they're doing now, the barrels and everything. But if SVB SVB doesn't exist in the first place, then how could we initiate all these ideas, right? So I think, um, I think the government is still watching. So unless something really messed up and then they will see how to regulate this industry. So apart from that, I think to, from this time onwards, it's all about testing um, people, investors, private investors, or trying to you know, pump in money to, to really get in these ideas and, that, and testing these ideas, right? Unless that, that stage have gone forward, I don't think there's a major clamp down regulations because, you know, like banks, right? With the MBS, you know, they've been doing that 08, 09, right? And um, unless anything, they can see that it's hard to do any regulations, tough regulations, in my opinion, right? That, that 
that that that could happen. And so I would say that you know let these entrepreneurs go out, do a lot of ton, tons of like use cases, and there might be some use case that work and don't work. And then eventually before that we reach that point, I don't think there's major like risk in terms of entrepreneurs trying to do what they want to do. Absolutely. So, so Peter, I mean, you are in the, in the space of finances, you talk to VCs, you talk to investors, you talk to project. What is the sentiment currently? Is everybody scared? People are sitting on the fence. So what is, what is the mindset currently? So for a lot of people who are listening to this podcast, a lot of them are trying to raise funds. So what, what is your advice to all of them? All right. My mindset is very, very simple, right? So on the firm's, on our firm's uh, um, um, thesis, we're still not deploying capital until like um, at the end of the Q2 or Q3. Um, but my thesis is actually, um, you should be buying this, right? This is like the, the opportunity of opportunities because evaluation comes down dramatically businesses that don't survive were out and here who are the here to stay right i think the whole whole crypto business is no different from traditional businesses right people like they come in they all more majority of investors will buy from the top right and then they'd sell at the bottom i think that's no different from what we're seeing now so whoever even investor size whoever stays here will stay here right and you're from, from the entrepreneur side so i think um, a lot of the messages that I, 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 I give to entrepreneurs is that, okay, don't worry about fundraising now. If you, if you have some leeway, if you are like, lucky enough to fundraise from 2020, 2021, right? You're at the top of the market where you have raised a lot of cash. Use that, use that you know, smartly, right? Because once you get out of the, of the gate, your valuation will come up. You will have you know, more products, more markets, and, and, and you justify your valuation, right? Because basically you're building that. And, and because I, I also been on the fundraising side as well, because I'm venture building for these businesses. It's that mentality and this mental, um, the strategies, right? Because there's no one out there gonna give you money. Not because of, not because of your business, because there, there's, sorry to say, a lot of the big funds are stuck with those tokens with long vesting periods. They don't even have the dry powder, to be honest. And the, if they're lucky enough, there are some projects to make money, but that's unrealized gains, right? And if you're lucky enough not to have really massive unrealized losses, um, just stick to your guns, right? Just building, uh, you know, we, we have a very balance sheet, very, very, very lean, low cost, and just building, keep on building. And then when the time comes, the VC, I think that most of the VC actually invest in the top of the market, you know, frankly. Um, and, and, and that's, that's where you get the crazy valuations and, and whatnot and make you make use of the grants and loans, right? Because in UK, that's a very good, that's the reason why I moved from Switzerland to UK because the UK system has a lot of, you know, grants and loans, even the US as well, right? They support you paying salaries to, to employees, right? To keep on building. And I, and, and I think if, if you still, if you're still in the business or on the on entrepreneurial side, don't waste your energy and time on fundraising because you know you know get nothing you're lucky to get a few but you know you get nothing because not because of your business because those guys deploying capital have no capital to deploy that's what they're raising fund you know three four five six whatever and if you're on the investing side um try try to look at businesses that that survived right and and and, and give them you know a few three three or four months I think what the, the VC world actually didn't account for is that a lot of term sheets and have given out, they haven't even venture bill. So part of our business is that because we're not a big fund, we can afford a time to kind of know the team behind it. We're for them for three, four or six months and see what they do, right? And eventually, because you help them um, enhance the business and eventually when time is great you have a you have a beautiful term sheet right so you're the you're gonna, you're gonna be the first one who's gonna have the best terms token or equity or whatever um and and and, and i think that's where we need we should use our time now like invest in entrepreneurs to work hand in hand and how i can make your business better how could i um uh, get into new markets because basically you can run a business worldwide globally now right with like call like us right you can you can have a business 
you know, that can be multi-country like US, uh, Dubai, and also in Asia right, at the same time, right? And I think that, that that's what I would be using my time now and not just like, okay, I, I have a company, I need to fundraise. That's frustrating, right? Because it's a chicken egg scenario whereby you have the cash first or the thing. But if you have a good thing, you know, a good business model, make it lean. And I think, you know, we, we're not far far off from, the, from another good bull market, right? We might be, well be six or nine months down a row, a year, that's the maximum before the Fed start pumping in, you know, cutting interest rate. And then that's, we all back in the, the blue cycle. So yeah, guys, those who are listening to this podcast, take it from Peter. And, and as they say, before a breakup, it's, it's not about you, it's about me. So it's it's not about you that what if, you, if you're trying to raise funds correct, currently and if you're not getting anything, it's not your fault because the market is that. So keep building is, is what, what Peter is advising. Do not look at fund. And, and you are completely right, Peter. I think in, in certain conditions, not just in business, in life as well, you have only two things. Either you can... You can just cry over something which you cannot control, which is maybe look, looking for fundraising and you're not getting anything or keep on building. And you know that your time will come eventually, if not in six months, nine months or max to max in one year. So uh, really very insightful conversation, Peter. And uh, to all those who are listening here, uh, I think that is coming in from Peter who has more than a decade of experience in investment. Uh, take it, don't. And, and when I also go to a lot of events and I talk to people, Everybody has been crying about the same thing that market is dry, nobody's investing. But I think that's the right thing because those who survive from this, this market would be the real winners rather than so all, all that bubble has gone and now only the real players are, are standing here. Yeah, I, I think people just tour about what's going to happen in a year's time, but they, they're not too optimistic what's going to happen to five or 10 years time, right? So we're building something that, you know, come on, the internet didn't build like 10 years, right? The Microsoft or the, the, the Netflix or the Googles, right? Um, didn't happen in one year time. I think a lot of people still worry about well, what happened in six, nine, 12 months time, but they lost vision what uh, happened to five years, three, five years or 10 years time, right? And um, that, that's something that entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs need to focus um, if they're lean enough, smart enough, they will survive it. Absolutely. I, I was reading a, a, a book uh, on philosophy and it, it said that we as human beings, we, a lot of time, we, we overestimate ourselves in one year, yeah. but we underestimate ourselves in three years. Exactly. Exactly. So we don't know. I mean, and we try to be, we try to move very fast, but if you look at the bigger picture, I think eventually things. Yeah. Just like Bill Gates, right? He, he invested chat GBT, right? Like 10 years ago. So he is the guy who's making a lot of money because he has this vision of 10 years. Right? Tesla, right? Who knows we have electric, electric cars, right? Ten, that, that's why the, the Elon Musk is now rich, right? He, they don't lose sight of what's happening five, 10 years. They don't care about what happened to one year, right? Eventually things will, 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 will settle itself. We, we reset. So I think 2023 is a, is a huge message out there if I'm giving any, is that it's gonna be a reset. Right, and 2024 and 25 beyond is going to be clear skies. Amazing advice coming from Peter. So Peter, as, as we come to the end of this interesting session, and I think we'll need to do one more uh, podcast or maybe a live session because there are a lot of questions which, which I really want to ask and understand from you, but the time is, is limiting us. Uh, coming to my last two questions, uh, which both of them are hypothetical questions. So question number one is if I give you a time machine and if you could go back 10 years down the line in your career, what will you do? What changes you will make? And in the same time machine, if you can go back 10 years down the line, where do you see yourself? Where do you see the markets? Where do you see your wisdom as well? Um, well, 10 years back then, um, actually my career wasn't very uh, insightful. Because uh, they, you see a lot of jumping around, right? Um, so people wasn't very admired by that. Oh, how, how can you live and work in so much countries? And that's not a career, right? Back then, you know, 20 years ago, you have to go to you know, a, a well-known company and build your from grounds up. And 
that wasn't insightful until now. I think I think that's that's a gamble that I made, um, and it was a gamble that was successful, luckily. Um, and I, and and I, and I think um, ten years further down the road, because I have a son myself, right? So, um, don't stick to one industry. Be adaptable. What what's happening? It's like it was the industry. Okay, if you were into 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 software engineering, right, writing programs, that was it, right? 2000, that was a dream job, right? If you can, you can, you can, you can write programs, but now you can punch that program to JetGPT, GPT and then they can, they can, they can say, okay, what's wrong, what's right, right? So that's an industry that probably could go under. Well, and I think just be a doubtful, right? Because I think that's what, what, what I made the leap uh, because a lot of friends supported me from, you know, traditional tech to now to blockchain, right? I think you just you gotta you gotta have different skill set, right? And it, and you, you keep on changing and adapting to the current market, right? And if because a lot of people who claims to know blockchain and digital asset was coming from banks and the trading currency, and, and it is right. Uh, uh, what I see in the crypto market is pretty much like a currency, right? Where you can it's ethics, right? Well, against you know you can Bitcoin against whatever, Ethereum or block or Polygon. It is like a it is similar to that. That's the basis, but you have to adapt to it and 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 to changing trends and and that's even more important now because um, our market is not like our fathers and mothers, right? It changes every two, three, five years. There's a new trend coming up, and if you if you adapt to that change, you'll be very successful. Absolutely, Peter. Uh, really, thank you for for sharing all your wisdom and insights on 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 this podcast if people want to get in touch with you how how can they get in touch with you um they can get in touch with me in several ways i mean through you as well voice of crypto thank you for the opportunity if they can you know they can they can reach me out um in twitter or telegram and i could share that information with you um but most most importantly you know get through your channel i think that that's pretty insightful because your channel is great sure sure Thank you, Peter, for coming on this. And uh, in the end, I would like to make you one request. So this, the, the whole idea of Voice of Crypto is, is decentralization of media and everybody voices. So we say that there is not a single voice who can say that I'm the Voice of Crypto, but we all are, are Voice of Crypto. So I would like you to say you are Voice of Crypto at the end of this video. Yeah, we are Voice of Crypto. <laughs> thank you very much, Peter. And, thank you very much. Uh, really, really thankful for you to coming here. And I'll see you again.